The fourth article is the second one I referred to earlier that was published in the month of November. I chose this one because it pulled together 50 different studies, most of which were randomized controlled trials in humans, and it pulled them into a systematic review that looked at the effects of giving the amino acid glycine on several different health areas, including metabolic health, nervous system health, and endocrine health, cardiovascular health, and immune system health. This paper is titled The Effects of Glycine Administration on the Characteristics of Physiological Systems in Human Adults, a Systematic Review. And it was published in the journal Geroscience. Now, for those of you that don't know, the term geroscience refers to a branch of science that's concerned with studying the intersection of three things, aging biology, chronic disease, and health. Glycine is a compound of interest in this area because a lack of glycine in animal and human research has shown impeded growth, immune responses, and metabolism. However, there is some really interesting evidence, again, in animals and humans, that giving extra glycine in the form of supplementation might protect against certain metabolic diseases in some cases. In animal models, specifically, glycine supplementation has extended the life of roundworms by up to 33%, the life of rats by up to 20%, and the life of mice by up to 6%. So am I about to make a claim that it can do the same for humans? No, that's not why I cite those statistics. The point of the matter is that glycine seems to be a molecule that is generally protective in the body. And given that it's relatively inexpensive and safe for oral use, that studying its potential on health span is an important current topic of interest to many people. Out of the 50 studies in the systematic review, 18 of which included healthy people, while the rest consisted of populations with a variety of different conditions. The ages of the people in the healthy populations ranged from 21 to 41 years old. So I assume that represents a large portion of the people listening to this podcast episode. For the populations with health conditions, conditions ages ranged from 29 years old to 67 years old. When looking at all the studies, people were supplementing glycine orally between two days for all the way up to four months. The longer dosing durations were usually in people with different metabolic conditions that included insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. The most notable finding of this review was that glycine supplementation not only had benefit for conditioned populations, but also could benefit the nervous system of healthy individuals. There were three different studies included in the review suggesting that three grams of glycine 30 to 60 minutes before sleep improved sleep quality, increased next day alertness and cognition, and decreased next day sleepiness and fatigue. The improvements in sleep even improved insulin responses in the healthy population. The positive effects that glycine has on sleep are thought to be through its mechanism at the NMDA receptor in the suprachiasmatic nucleus brain region. This brain center is considered the master circadian pacemaker of the body that synchronizes cellular clocks to align with light-dark cycles of the environment that we're in. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is also critical for promoting hypothermia and vasodilation. One of the ways in which the body prepares for sleep is by reducing core body temperature and signaling within the suprachiasmatic nucleus plays a key role in this particular function. The review paper highlights that glycine seemed to be most effective at improving nervous system characteristics like the ones I just mentioned, but also in psychiatric populations. There were actually 10 different studies that cited where oral glycine was used between 200 to 800 milligrams per kilogram body weight, usually as an adjunct treatment for 6 to 12 weeks where it improved schizophrenic symptoms in psychiatric populations, glycine at 3 grams twice daily for a total of 6 grams a day for 4 weeks improved sleep latency, that is, a shorter time to fall asleep in people with overactive bladder disorder. Less surprisingly, but still relevant outcomes of glycine supplementation in conditioned populations included improved insulin sensitivity, inflammatory markers, and blood pressure when glycine was supplemented at 5 grams 3 times daily 
for three months, at least three months. Of course, I do have to reiterate here that anyone listening to this podcast that becomes interested in the use of supplemental glycine for the purpose of improving symptoms of a specified condition must consult with their doctor before doing so. Glycine is safe. It is quite safe, but you do need your doctor's blessing just to be sure that there are no contraindications where someone will be put under the harm of supplementing something like glycine. 